evening. This is our third in the series of midweek Lenten services of Facing the Cross. And tonight, as you might know, we are facing our worldliness, the things that sometimes can creep ahead in priority in our lives, even to the point of, in some ways, becoming more important to us in our priorities and values than our faith, than Jesus himself. And so uh, this is a good time as any to face up to that and to find the solution in the cross. Uh, and as we get ready to do that, though, we're going to continue our passion readings. Uh, last week, we got to the place in the readings where Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. And tonight, we follow him as he continues on to uh, the first of his, his hearings. And so there'll be parts here for pastor as well as men and women. Let's begin. The detachment of soldiers with its commander and the Jewish official, officials bound Jesus and brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it would be good if one man died for the people. Sign. other it was cold and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm Peter also was standing with them warming himself meanwhile the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching Jesus replied I have Is this the way you answer the high priest? Then Annas sent him, still bound, to Caiaphas, the high priest. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard. Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Why do we need any more witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They are. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came by. When she saw P Peter warming himself, she looked closely at him and said, you. But he denied it and said, Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. He went out into the entryway. When the servant girl saw him there, she said again to those standing around, This Again, he denied it. And a little while, though standing near, said to Peter, Surely you are one of them, for you are the Lord. 
one of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. <laughs> then he began to call down curses on himself, and he swore to them. <laughs> Immediately the rooster crowed a second time. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. We sing the song. As you're able to, please stand as we continue with the invocation and the opening verses. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, Jesus set his face to go to Jerusalem to die on the cross for us. And he said, And so, friends, we set our faces to the cross of Christ this evening, not on the treasures of the world. Jesus said, do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. O oh Lord Jesus, I confess that I have often conformed to the ways of this world and been more concerned about my earthly possessions than my heavenly treasure. I have put the things of this earth before the things of God. And in fact, I confess all of my sins to you this night, some of which I know, such as the thoughts, words, and actions of which I am ashamed but also the sins I am not aware of, but nevertheless are known to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness, for he has passed through death on the cross on my behalf and for my own salvation. Hear these words from St. Paul. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light to the knowledge of the glory of God 
in the face of Christ. We find forgiveness for all our worldly ways in Jesus Christ. For in him we find everything we need for this life and the life to come. Therefore your sins are forgiven because of Jesus. And your former grasp on worldly things is replaced by the grip of faith on his grace. We thank you, Jesus, for facing the world by going to the cross and not being charmed by temporary treasures. Mom in. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Oh, Jesus Christ, you came from heaven to dwell on earth with us, to point our eyes heavenward and see that there is more to life than our earthly existence. Loosen our grip on the things of this earth and help us cling more tightly to the things of heaven as we go about our days, especially during this Lenten season. Help us recognize that the things of this earth are only temporary but that the things of heaven are permanent. Then may our lives reflect the fact in how we use our time, spend our resources, and prioritize our values in all things. Let your cross keep us focused on what really matters. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. Tonight's Old Scripture reading is from Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Sharad and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is, the on and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down, and there confuse their language, so that it may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> the epistle reading comes from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done of it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness? waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt 
as they burn. But according, but according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. We stand in honor of God, the gospel, the holy gospel according to St. Matthew, the 19th chapter. And behold, a man came up to Jesus, saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, all these I have kept, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you would be perfect, go, sell what you possess and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. And Jesus said to his disciples, Truly I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then Peter said in reply, See, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus said to them, Truly I say to you, In the new world, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or lands for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated while we sing.
May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord our God, our rock, and our Redeemer. Amen. I'm going to start off with a little bit of true confessions time. It's still Lent, right? Confessions are good for the soul. and No, this won't hurt too much. Uh, just quickly, show of hands, how many of you enjoy a good rummage sale? Garage sale, estate sale, those kinds of things. Some of you are raising hands, some of you not really sure you want to admit this, don't know where this is going. <laughs> those kinds of things can be very nice to go to. You can't save money and find things that you, you know, another person's trash is your treasure, that kind of stuff. Or maybe you like doing rummage sales, garage sales. You get rid of a lot of stuff and make, make a little money on the side as well. But either way, my point is the fact that there are almost continually, depending on what part of the country you're in, garage sales, rummage sales, yard sales, estate sales, and on and on and on and on, what it tells you is that we can accumulate a whole lot of stuff, right? Not only clothes, furniture, toys, cars, plants, books, letters, computers, Pens and pencils, artwork, knickknacks, souvenirs, appliances, and on and on and on and on it goes. A lot of the stuff that we have does have special meaning, has value to us. Maybe it does something that serves us in some way. Other stuff that we have, it's that sentimental attachment that we have for it. And there are other reasons as well. There are all kinds of reasons for the stuff that every one of us accumulates. Which is why I'm sure in at least some way, to a certain degree, all of us can sympathize with this young man in the gospel lesson tonight who went away sad when Jesus told him, well, you know the thing to do is to sell all you have. Give it to the poor and then follow me. It can be hard to give up the things of the world that we hold so dear. Now, there is an important distinction to be made here, and it's, and, and it's important that we don't take this in some wrong direction here. The Bible is not saying, you better get rid of everything you have because that's the way you get to heaven. That's the only way you're going to be saved is to get, every, get rid of everything that you have. The discussion that, that Jesus was having this young, with this young man was meant to uncover what he was apparently a little bit unwilling to admit that he was holding just a little bit too tightly, maybe quite a bit too tightly, to his possessions, to his stuff, to be able to truly and really devote his life to Christ. He was all for making Jesus important, but not so sure about making him first. And maybe you and I can struggle with that from time to time, too. So we are not saying here that it is bad to have things. And we're not saying it's wrong to, to want nice things. The point of the story, of course, is that we as followers of Jesus make sh must make sure that the things of this world are not taking away our primary focus on Jesus. Jesus needs to be that always number one priority, not the things that we have on this earth. Sometimes, for some people, that desire to have the, the very best or a little bit more or whatever it is can be all-consuming. And, and, and putting worldliness aside in order to focus our attention on Jesus, some might find that an almost impossibility. Well, what did Jesus say? It's kind of like trying to get a camel to the eye of a needle. And even though I imagine that all of us here are at least sometimes in certain ways guilty of putting possessions and material wealth and stuff as a higher priority than following Jesus, the Bible tells us that there's still hope. With God, Jesus says, all things are possible. Maybe for you and me it's impossible, but not for him. He makes it... He makes it possible for us by passing through this earth, dying on the cross for our many worldly sins, and opening a way for us to the empty tomb of Easter to live in heaven with him, where we'll be focused 
on him first, last, and always, all of eternity. So the cross of Jesus, during Lent especially, but all year, the cross of Jesus is a stark reminder to us that we can't take anything of this world with us when we die. And so we must cling to Christ and his salvation if we hope to ever have life in heaven. His life is what gives our lives meaning. The stuff that we have, or the stuff that we wish we had but don't have, that's not what gives it meaning. The cross of Jesus gives meaning. Once we come to understand that, our approach to the things of the world change. Clothes become something not just to enjoy wearing, which is fine, but also something that we can, in Christ-like love, share with those who, who, who need to be better clothed, warmer clothed. Food becomes something that not only is des delicious to eat, and desirable to look at, but something we can, as many of you do, donate to a food pantry or one of our church's missions to, to help the hungry, serving them in their need as Christ serves us. So we all know that saying, well, you can't take it with you. And that's true, but in the meantime, we can use what God has given us in this world to bring the love of God to those around us. When it comes to money, possessions, our, our motivation should always be to bring glory to God with our possessions, not glory to ourselves. See, that was wrong with the people in the Old Testament reading, right? That familiar story, the Tower of Babel. People were getting too full of themselves, built a tower, built a tower not as a way of pointing the way to God, but what they hoped would stand as a testament to what they could do. And in the meantime, for, they forgot about God. And whether we like it or not, whether we see it or not, people today still are building monuments of various kinds to themselves. And we need to be careful not to fall into that trap too. So during this Lent, maybe you've done this already, but maybe you open up your closets and take a look at everything that you've got stocked up in the pantries and face your worldliness. Face the reality that maybe you really don't need to have everything that's in those places. Then consider what you can do about that, how that blessing can be shared and as, as, as an expression of the life of Christ that God has given you on the cross. And, and don't just give away the things that, well, you can't wear them because they're getting worn out anyway. Or the food that's gone stale, they've been past the, the expiration date. Or in my case, I'm going to give away the canned beets. <laughs> Maybe it's better and even more Christ-like to consider donating your favorite food or something that you might actually miss. Maybe not just a little bit, but maybe a lot. The sting of parting with that special possession, something that does have value to you, can be a good reminder to us to, to loosen up our grip on worldly goods and, and hold tighter onto the message of the cross. You know, sometimes in church, well, other places too, but it, it, certainly in church, I've heard this said more than once, you know, to give until it hurts. You've probably heard that. In other words, sacrificial giving helps us to appreciate what a great sacrifice Jesus made for us, giving himself by dying on the cross. But I've also heard, and maybe you've heard this one too, I've also heard it said that for Christians, we should not just give until it hurts, but give until it, until it doesn't hurt until it actually starts feeling good. So at some point, it starts to really sink in that it is so very freeing not to be contained by all our stuff, but more and more to find real, tr real joy, true contentment by relying on God. In Matthew chapter 6, Jesus talks about treasures. What you treasure speaks volumes about who you are and how close you are to God. So this is the verse, this is the part where Jesus says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. 
But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal. And then he says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. What heavenly treasures are you storing up for yourselves this Lent? You know, Lent is a great time to, 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 to stockpile forgiveness, to, to stash away piles of mercy for amassing as much gracious attitude toward others as, as we possibly can. Other possessions to hang on to tightly are faith in Christ, trust in the promises that when this world comes to an end, he has a place for us prepared in heaven. See, we already possess the greatest gift of all, love for God, love for Christ, love for our neighbor. The depth of our love, of course, is never going to match up to the depth of the love that Christ had for us when he went to the cross. But as we get closer and closer to the last day, our love will build up inside of us through Christ. And in this way, we'll grow closer to Christ. And in the end, we will possess the greatest thing of all, that crown of life, which we wear for all eternity. And what a treasure that will be. In Jesus' name, amen. We worship the Lord with our offerings. Please also use the time, if you haven't yet, to record your attendance in the attendance uh, pads in, in your pew and also a musical offering. In our prayers tonight, as we've been doing during our midweek services, each of the petitions will end, O Christ, who face the cross, and you're invited to respond. Turn your ears to us. Let's stand to pray. Jesus, it is amazing to us that you volunteer to be cursed, punished, even forsaken by our Heavenly Father in our place. Draw us in spirit back in time in order to to face the cross, to see all the more clearly the blood flowing from your wounds and open our hearts to the realization of that it, it flows for us. And then as we consider the sacrifice that you made on our behalf, help us to crucify our flesh with its weakness for worldliness and materialism, and then resurrect us day by day with lives that treasure you far above all else. O Christ, who faced the cross, Turn your Grant that we would be devoted to you in our hearts and lives, just as you were completely devoted to the will of your Father. And whether in public when we're seen, or in private when you alone see us, help us conduct our entire lives in the manner that is befitting of those whom you call on to follow you. Give us a ready willingness to bear our crosses, and if need be, to suffer for you as you so willingly suffered for us. O Christ, who faced the cross, turn your ears to us. By your Holy Spirit, raise up in our hearts a 
childlike faith that does not question or hesitate, but that comes boldly to your throne of grace regardless of circumstances, to seek mercy and help in every time of need, confident in your love and protection. O Christ, who faced the cross, turn your ears to us. And now in that same confidence, we come to you, together praying the evening prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.